arrived seeking food and shelter. To some extent, what we have here is a kind of a domino effect. The collapse and abandonment of these cities in the West. The problem is displaced persons, as, they, as the UN calls them today. You know, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people losing their homes and migrating to other regions. More and more people grew more and more desperate. And suddenly things went from very, very bad to much, much worse. All of a sudden you got another 10, 20, 30,000, 100,000 people moving into your region. Man, then things really fall apart. Things fell apart with astonishing speed. Right after our victims died, the city of Kangquen was no more. And the splendid Maya world began to disappear while chaos and bloodshed rushed in to fill the void. And it's sudden, and it's, you know, within 50 years, and it's violent. Why did it happen? What did our victims witness in the final days of their lives? It's long been suspected that a fatal combination of drought and overpopulation. Too many people, not enough food, destroyed the Maya. But another theory adds something else to this recipe of doom. Something that could be one of the motives for the dreadful murders at Kang Gwen. Murders that might be traced to a most unexpected perpetrator. Khan Masha's father, King Taj Chanak. Khan Quen's greatest monarch didn't actually murder his son and relations. When those killings took place, Taj was already dead. But great Maya kings like Taj Chanak may have sown seeds of discord that led to the killings. Not with violence, but with sex. By exercising the right of Maya kings to have any woman they wanted, and not just for pleasure. Like other Maya rulers, Taj could have forged alliances by marrying other kings' daughters. The more alliances, the better. Call it strategic polygamy. For a king like Taj, it was a quest for even greater power. But for his descendants, it may have begotten disaster. Because while all those royal marriages did create long-lasting alliances, they also created a longer-lasting problem. Royal children. Experts have done the math. If the king of a Maya city had only four children, and those four children each had four, and their 16 grandchildren each had four. The king would have 32 great-grandchildren. And that's with only one wife. Multiply that number by several wives, and after only 200 years, more than 500 people in one Maya city could claim royal blood. Arthur Demarest thinks that may be why Kang Quen's royal palace boasted a staggering 200 rooms. And why, beneath its bustling prosperity, the city may have seethed with tension. The rivalry between nobles and kings and the competition was pretty central to classic Maya civilization. They would breed a number of the people in their courts that they would put on the thrones in different places. 
the sub nobles were all working to increase their prestige which was really a major source of their power and that not only involved wars and rituals and alliances but also building bigger temples uh, and having a more impressive display this competitive rivalry between these rulers got to be increasingly expensive were our victims some of these competing aristocrats commissioning ever more impressive monuments to outdo one another if they were they didn't build them and they didn't pay for them that fell on the shoulders of the common people as forced labor and as taxes you had a growing burden on the society, on uh, the, the middle and, and, and lower classes in terms of what they had to produce in order to support this growing system of status rivalry. Seen through this lens, the wealthy, luxurious world of our victims suddenly looks very different. Fractured by smoldering hatreds, commoners against nobles, nobles against one another, kings against kings. Jealousies and power struggles, draining treasuries and using up food supplies. Perhaps even as drought began withering the fields. And even prosperous cities like Conquen edged closer to the brink. Suddenly, the insulting burial of Khan Mosh doesn't seem so puzzling. And the massacre of an entire noble family doesn't seem so strange. Arthur Demarest believes that by 800 AD, only a king as strong as Taj Chanak could have held Conquen's cracking facade together. After him, no one could. It isn't surprising that right after Taj Chanak, everything falls apart. You just have too many elites, too many rivals, and in a status rivalry system, it was, it was bound to blow apart at some point. And at Conquen, it really blew apart in a dramatic way. This find is a kind of a keystone. Uh, I mean, it, it just pulls everything together in terms of understanding the Maya collapse. It's really unusual to find that and to find this kind of a snapshot of one of the moments in the disintegration of this civilization, one of the more unfortunate and tragic moments. It's very important because it shows us that civilizations can really screw up It's a war crime from 1,200 years ago. No one knows who killed Kong Quen's murder victims. Was it commoners who had enough of forced labor in crushing taxes? Or jealous relatives who wanted their rivals out of the way? Or perhaps other cities coveting Kong Quen's riches or tired of its stranglehold on trade. But reading the riddle of these butchered bones leaves us with a profound lesson. The Maya prospered for over a thousand years, feeding huge populations in the middle of the tropics. building cities of stupendous size and beauty, calculating calendars of astonishing accuracy, creating sophisticated language, complex mathematics, and beautiful art. They conquered nature. They conquered time. They conquered the world of the mind. But there was one thing all their brilliance couldn't conquer, and it ultimately destroyed them. They couldn't conquer 
themselves.